Hello, I'm Patricia Botero Saint Jean, founder of Open for Business and Business Research Strategist. Welcome to your Business Ownership Research Lab. If you're curious about starting your own business instead of having a job or even while you keep your job, you are in the right place. From 30 years of my career as entrepreneur in the trenches of America's main street business, I have created a unique and effective method designed for any aspiring entrepreneur, perhaps like yourself, to research and find the right business so that you can use it as a vehicle to build a life you love. This method is called Right Business, Right Life. So today I thought I would share with you my personal story and how I became a big fan of business and small business ownership. And then use my mistakes and lessons learned to illustrate why taking time to research business ownership before you jump into any business or a sold one is critical to your success. I call them these moments teachable, teachable moments. And I hope that it also will show you why if I can build a life of my own design as a business owner, so can anyone, regardless of age, background, capital, or knowledge in small business, as long as you pick the right business for you. So I started my first business at 25 with zero knowledge of the small business world. And just with just a high school education, very little startup capital, and my English was elementary to say the least. It was not a smooth, easy ride, but it taught me one essential element. Owning your business is the best way to build a life you love, one that prioritizes who is important to you and what is important to you. So if this is what you want, let's move forward. As you can hear from my accent, I was not born here. I was born in Paris, but by now I've spent more years of my life in the United States than in France. I embarked on this small business journey over three decades ago with little education and even less capital. I had dropped out of college and then worked in a bank and later in finance for a multinational civil engineering company in Paris. Although the latter was interesting work, by age 22, I already felt stuck in the eight to five daily grind of commute, work, commute again, sleep and repeat. And to the great despair of my parents who both spent their entire 40 year career working for the same state run company in France, I announced to them that I would quit my good job and predictable life in Paris and go see the world. So, I made the decision, insane and irresponsible according to my family, to abandon my secure but mind-numbing life in corporate and go live in America for a year. 35 years ago, I ended up in the San Francisco Bay Area. And shortly after, I realized that I belonged here. You know that feeling when your life, you feel like the odd duck among your peers, and suddenly you find yourself in a new environment with a new cultures that feels right to you. Well, this is how I met and fell in love with my soul country. I vividly remember that it was during a ski trip in the Sierra Nevada, this beautiful mountain range in California, that I made the conscious but outlandish decision at the time of spending the rest of my life here. The question was how and when. So here's Teachable moment number one, regardless of your age, if where you are in your career is not contributing to your happiness, explore other worlds. No need to recklessly pack and go, but explore business ownership before you jump into any business and even while you keep your job. So continuing with my story, I ended up starting my business journey in the U.S., but really out of necessity and to create a job for myself. The first business I started was a small skincare studio, really small, 250 square feet, with really the basic skincare services such as makeup, facials, waxing. My small studio eventually grew to become one of the first European day spas 
in the country offering more lavish spa treatments and amenities such as steam baths, hydrotherapy tubs, and full, a full day spa getaway as well. It later became a respectable $2 million small enterprise housed in a 4,000 square foot two-story building and employing a team of 40 to 50. I started this business with a minimal viable product that people would buy, and then I built upon it as I learned what worked and what didn't work and what my customers wanted. And this is teachable moment number two. There are more than one path to business ownership. You could do a startup, a turnkey concept, or an acquisition. I started a business from zero, an independent startup from a brand new idea. But later, I discovered the other two paths are always worth learning from. The turnkey concepts such as franchise and acquisitions of businesses that are for sale. Each of the three paths have pros and cons and uh, might lead to faster results depending on who you are. So the path I took was long and arduous, 22 years, but because of my own limitation, but also because a startup usually takes longer. However, if you find that a startup is your path, start with a minimal viable product and then iterate over time and expand your offerings based on what you learn from your early adopters. Today, we call that the Lean Startup Methodology, which originated from the high-tech software development industry. So I began my business Lean because financially, I had no choice. During my online courses, we apply this same principle to small independent startup businesses, which is how I teach you how to vet your new small business idea before making a large investment of money and time. We also explore all three paths by using, or to business ownership by using my unique tool to evaluate each. So back to my story. Back then, I didn't realize, but I know now, that I was probably one of the least qualified business owners and I should have failed. My command of the English language was rudimentary to say the least. All I had was a high school education and a trade school diploma in spa treatment. And this was also the mid late 80s. Very few in the US market even knew what a spa was. This was essentially, there was essentially no spa market then. Unlike in Europe where spas were part of a long tradition and had trade school teaching people how to become skilled providers of spa services. Here, I also had to develop a training program to teach spa treatments to my new employees. So that was another challenge. I also had minimal startup capital. I bootstrapped this business from a shoestring savings and grew it over time by reinvesting the profits over a long time, which is why it took 22 years to really um, to make it successful. And yet, in spite of my lack of knowledge, lack of experience, and very small capital, my business grew for one reason. I was completely in sync with my business and I loved it. And this made all the difference. Every morning for the next 20 years that I grew that business, I got up with a mission and with a passion because the business capitalized on my strength, but most importantly, the business was aligned with my goals for what I considered an ideal life for me. Eventually, my business became a means to an end. I was busy growing my business based on who and what was important to me. That was my family. Once I was married and had a baby, my priorities changed and I rapidly switched from being a career-driven entrepreneurial woman to being a mompreneur. And to illustrate this point, I even created a daycare center in my spa so that my son could be there with a babysitter while I work and so we could have our lunches together and sometimes midday outings for a swing rides to the nearby kids park. Some of my spa clients even appreciate the childcare facility as they brought their own children while they received spa treatments. This is just to illustrate that I created a business to suit my life. Once my business could support it, I was also able to afford a manager and a bookkeeper to handle the day-to-day -day operations, which freed my time 
for other important activities. These activities included strategizing growth, reviewing my financials more thoroughly, developing new channels. For example, in 1996, we were the first spa in Silicon Valley to have a website and later added e-commerce to our brick and mortar business. It also gave me more flexibility to travel and be with my family and pursue other interests, such as returning to college. Teachable moment number three. It is not just finding an economically viable business that will give you the life you want. You need to be in sync with the business you choose. There are actually thousands of viable business concepts out there. Looking for the hot business, one that has a proven business plan or of which everyone is jumping on the bandwagon or riding the trend is the wrong way to begin your entrepreneurial career. Yes, the business does need to be economically viable, but that is secondary to matching yourself to a business that is right for you. Because you could very well find yourself owner of a viable business and yet hate your life because you learn too late that the day-to-day -day activities required by this business are, are not supporting your priorities in life. On the other hand, as you experience ups and downs in your business, as we all do in any career, you will find that if you are in sync with your business, meaning that it, service, it services your higher purpose, your big why, you will find that your resilience and motivation will help you overcome almost any challenges. In my business, I did have one big advantage. I was in alignment with my genius zone. Since I was European and had, I had an immediate competitive advantage, this allowed me to capitalize on the fact that my weakness, not having the perfect English pronunciation or grammar, was actually a credibility factor in my market, which was reinforced by my trainings to European spa treatments. Teachable moment number four, understand your strengths and blind spots and capitalize on them and then hire the rest. There are many expertise required to run a small business and no one starts as an expert in all areas of business operations. You need to know not just the field or technical specialty of what the business provides, you also need to understand bookkeeping, reading financials, human resource management, marketing, public relations, community outreach, logistics, and most importantly, leadership, even if you have no employees. But you do, you do wait to become an expert in all these areas before this, um, this starting a business. You do not need to, you first need to identify your genius and align yourself with the business that needs it. Understanding where you should spend your time and where you should delegate or outsource is a fundamental element to your success. So going back to my story, perhaps the main reason I thrived as a business owner, even though at 25 years old, I knew nothing of running a company, but, and for this reason, I made some huge blunders in business, but recovered even, even though none of these mistakes were fun at the time. My big why was, and still is to keep learning and growing. And I saw this business really as a main tool to my personal growth, which means that when facing a business challenge or questions, I would look at it as a teachable moment, not just for me, but for my team as well. My definition of a teachable moment is what can we learn from this screw up and improve? So teachable number, moment number five, growth mindset and continuous learning. A growth mindset is simply making the decision to step outside of your comfort zone so that you can learn something expecting that you will make some mistakes small and big. Accepting that you will make mistakes small and big, but always using them to your advantage by learning from them and progressing as a, is a key element to your success. Entrepreneurs who do not have a growth mindset set themselves up for a very arduous and painful journey. 
Part of having a growth mindset is also recognizing what you don't know and hiring others who are experts in their field to teach you. This is another key reason I was able to grow myself and my business. Still today, I hire mentors and coaches expert in their field and know more than I do so that they can help me grow new skills and grow my business. So far this year alone, um, we are on 10 months, nine months into the year, I've already spent $20,000 learning from others in areas that are not my expertise. And I have no regret, it is money well spent. As business owners, you'll find that you're gonna invest in equipment, in research and development, in marketing, in your employees. But the biggest return on investment, the biggest ROI is an investment on yourself and your knowledge because that will pay back time and time again. And this is even more true today with access to tons of knowledge in the World Wide Web and you can learn from others who have experience, expertise and experience in many niches and avoid many costly mistakes. So to conclude, like many entrepreneurs, once I reached my goals and became very good at what I did, I realized that to grow, I needed a new challenge. Until that point, I had been very happy with my education after all, I made a high six-figure income 20 years ago with just a high school diploma. And more importantly to me, I had the freedom and flexibility that I wanted in my life. But then I had reached my own glass ceiling. My son now was an independent young adult. So I decided to return to college while I was still running my business. Since entrepreneurship is my passion still, I completed a master's degree in business administration. As my interest, my career interest evolved, I also moved on from my original startup business and became a mentor for other small business owners. And it actually began with my former competitors asking me to help them grow their business. But I also worked in franchising and in small business mergers and acquisition, which was very exciting to me as all of a sudden I observed from an insider's perspective, how thousands of unique business models develop their secret sauce to scale and grow their business. Working with and associating with hundreds of business owners, some as independent startups, some in franchising, and others who bought a for sale business in acquisition, I observed that the majority of business owners actually struggle. And I also discovered why. Most of them were smart and capable people who had picked or were sold the wrong business for them. What the business needed and could produce and what the owner was able to do and needed for a satisfying life were a mismatch, which resulted in unnecessary pain for the owner and often the end of the business. So here's teachable moment number six. This final lesson is a compilation of the five above. To succeed in small business, what you need most is not a growth mindset and begin your journey by picking the right business for you. So today my company Open for Business is an evolution of my 30 year career in the trenches of America's Main Street business. It allows me to make a bigger impact as I teach business owners how to create a life of their own design via business ownership by teaching what I learned and how to not repeat my mistakes. I have walked the walk of business ownership and it still is an incredible an amazing journey. My unique set of small business experience and abilities and my practical experience of the world of small to mid-sized enterprise make it a privilege and also my life's calling to help aspiring entrepreneurs succeed. My mission is simple. It's to show you how to make this journey your best chapter yet and how it won't take you 20 plus years. Through my courses, coaching sessions, and the market resources that I share with you, 
you will save significant time, energy, and a lot of money in identifying how to start the right business for you so that you can build a life you love. My course gives you the ammunition and the insight that very few people have when they begin their entrepreneurial career. You will also be at an equal playing field with any business broker, business seller, or franchise coach or consultant that you might want to work with. So, do you think it makes sense to first understand how to dramatically increase your chances of success by minimizing the risk of starting the wrong business for you? If you agree, I invite you to sign in to receive my news. Perhaps connect with me on social media if you'd like. Subscribe to my YouTube and Vimeo channels. And join me on my next free webinar. Cheers to building a life we love.